In this video, we're going to take a look at solving cubics and quartics. Now, we know by the fundamental theorem of algebra that a cubic equation will always have three roots. Now, let's say we have this cubic equation here. So we've got az cubed plus bz squared plus cz plus d, and this all equal to zero with real coefficients. Then we have one of two possibilities here. So for the first possibility, we have that all three roots are real. And for this situation here, this is what you should be most familiar with from GCSE and A-level maths. Now for the second possibility, we have that one root is real and the other two roots form a complex conjugate pair. Now don't forget for complex solutions or complex roots, they do occur in a conjugate pair. Okay, so it's important to note that here. So those are the two possibilities then for a cubic equation. So now what about a quartic equation? Well, it's pretty similar. So for a quartic equation, again, with real coefficients, we have one of three possibilities now. And again, if I just mention it here, by the fundamental theorem of algebra, a quartic equation will always have four roots. Okay, so notice here, for a cubic equation, we always have three roots. For a quartic equation, we will always have four roots. And that's by the fundamental theorem of algebra. Okay, so now for the three possibilities here, well, for our first one, we have that all four roots are real. Okay. For the second possibility, we have that two roots are real and the other two roots form a complex conjugate pair. Again, just notice that they occur in a conjugate pair. And then finally, for the very last possibility here, we have that two roots form a complex conjugate pair and the other two roots also form a complex conjugate pair. Okay. So there we have it. Nothing too intense that we're introducing here. Just these basic concepts then for a cubic equation and a quartic equation. Okay. So that's everything that we need then for our introduction here to solving cubics and quartics. Let's take a look now at some practice questions. Starting off with question one then, where we have f of z, which is equal to this cubic here. So we've got z cubed minus z squared minus 7z plus 15. And for the first part then, part a, all I want to do is show that f of minus 3 equals 0. So pretty standard stuff to begin with here. So to show that f of minus 3 equals 0, all we need to do is substitute minus 3 into this cubic here. And we should hopefully be able to simplify it and show that that is equal to 0. Okay, so let's start by doing that. So f of minus 3, this is equal then to minus 3 cubed. So we've got minus 3 cubed. We then got minus minus 3 squared. We've then got minus 7 lots of minus 3. And then finally plus 15. So let's simplify this here. Minus 3 cubed is minus 27. Minus 3 squared would be 9, so this is minus 9. We've then got minus 7 lots of minus 3, so just be very careful with the signs here. This would be plus 21. And then finally, plus 15. So if we simplify this here, minus 27 minus 9, that's minus 36. 21 plus 15 is positive 36. We get plus 36 there. And clearly, minus 36 plus 36, that gives us 0. Okay, so f of minus 3 is equal to 0 as required there. Okay. That's all we need to do for part A. So that's the first part of this question complete. So now for part B, it says hence solve f of z equals zero completely. So all part B is asking us to do here is find all the solutions to this equation here. Okay. Now, the reason it says hence solve is we're going to use part A to help us answer part B. And how can we do that? Well, if f of minus 3 equals 0, so if f of minus 3 equals 0, then what this tells us here is z plus 3 must be a solution. Okay, so z plus 3 is a solution by the factor theorem. Okay, so just think back to your first year of A-level maths. So z plus 3 is a solution to f of z equals 0. 
And this is by the factor theorem, okay? So why is this important? Well, what I can do now is take this cubic here and I can now express this as a product of linear factors. Oh, sorry, not linear factors, but I would have one linear factor and a quadratic factor. Okay, so I can express it as a product of factors. And like I said, one of those factors would be a linear factor, namely z plus 3. And then we're going to have a quadratic factor. So let's do that then. So we get z plus 3 times by a quadratic here. Now, because the coefficient of z cubed is 1, I know the coefficient of my z squared here would also be 1. We get z squared there. Then we're going to get plus bz plus c. Obviously, we now need to find the value of b and c. So we'll come back to that in a moment. And this would be equal then to the original cubic here. So we're going to get z cubed minus z squared minus 7z and then finally plus 15. Okay. So there's two ways to do this. The first way is using algebraic long division. I personally detest algebraic long division. So I'm going to use method two, which is inspection. So what I can do is look at this product here, okay? And I can match coefficients. So what I mean by that is, for example, this plus 15 here, there's only one way to get that. And that's by taking my last term here, this plus three, and times in that by the C. So I get three C is equal to 15. And in that case, then if we solve this here, we get that C is equal to five, okay? So now I can update this here. So what I've got then is z plus 3 times by z squared plus bz plus 5, because we know that c is equal to 5. So plus 5 there. And again, this would be equal to this cubic here. So I get z cubed minus z squared minus 7z plus 15. So now what I'm going to consider here is this linear term of minus 7z. How do we obtain that? Well, the first way would be to take this z here and times that by the 5. So that would give me 5z. The other way to get that is to take the 3 here and times that by bz. So I get 3bz there. And this sum here, 5z plus 3bz, that must be equal to minus 7z. Okay, so if I now match the coefficients here, okay, I've got 5 plus 3b, and that must be equal to minus 7. So 5 plus 3b is equal to minus 7. Okay, so if we solve this here, hopefully nice and straightforward, I get that 3b is equal to minus 12, and then divide both sides by 3, and we get that b is equal to minus 4. Okay, so we found the value of c and b, so what I can do now is express this as its um, product again. So what we add here, we've got z plus 3, and we have z squared, we had plus bz, now b is equal to minus 4, so that's minus 4z. And then finally plus c here, where c is equal to 5, like so. Okay. So now this is f of z. Okay, all I've done here is took this cubic here and expressed that as a product of two factors. Okay. Well, clearly this is my first solution then to f of z equals 0. My second um factor here this leads me to the remaining solutions okay so we've got a quadratic here so what you might normally do is just attempt to factorize this now if you attempt to factorize this you won't be able to get a solution okay and the reason for that is because this quadratic here has complex solutions okay and you can check that by finding the discriminant obviously if you find the discriminant on this you should find that it's less than zero no real solutions okay so what we need to do now is solve this here equals zero. So now solve. I've got z squared minus 4z 
plus 5 equals 0. Okay. So the easy way to do this is just complete the square. If I complete the square on this quadratic here, I'm going to get z minus 2 all squared. We then get minus 4 because we square this and take the negative of that. So minus 4 plus the 5. So plus 5 there, and that is equal to 0. And then we simplify this here. I get z minus 2 all squared. Minus 4 plus 5, we get plus 1. And that is equal to 0. Okay. So let's keep going here and solving this. So subtract 1 off both sides then. So I get z minus 2 all squared is equal to minus 1. And what we do now is we square root both sides. If I square root the left hand side, we simply get left with z minus 2. On the right hand side here, then the square root of minus 1, that would give us plus or minus i. Okay. Don't forget the plus or minus, very important. So plus or minus i there. And then from here, we just want the value of z. We add 2 to both sides. So therefore, z is equal. So z is equal to 2 plus or minus i. Okay. So from here then, we can now identify the solutions then to f of z equals 0. So therefore, the roots are the solutions. I'll call them the roots. The roots are so the roots or the solutions are so our first one was minus three here, as we saw in part a, f of minus three equals zero. So I've got minus three. We've then got two plus i. And then finally two minus i. Okay. And there we have it. So what we've done there is we found the roots of a cubic equation. Okay. Now you can see two of those roots were complex roots and the remaining root was real. So there we have it. So that is the solution there to question one. If we just take a look then at one more practice question, now we have question two, which is looking at a quartic. So we've got f of z, which is equal to z to the power of four plus three z cubed minus z squared plus 17z plus 20. Now for the first part, part A, all we want to do here is express f of z in this form here, where b and c are real constants to be found. So for part A then, the first thing to notice here really is that f of z, if it's expressed in this form here, it just basically means that f of z is now expressed as a product of quadratic factors. Okay, so the way to obtain the second quadratic factor here, well there's two ways we can do that. We can either use algebraic long division, or if you're like me and detest algebraic long division, then using inspection by equating the coefficients is also fine. So either method's fine, whichever you prefer. But like we did for the previous question, I'm also going to use inspection again for this question. So let's just start by writing down this product here. So I've got z squared plus 5z plus 4. We then times this by z squared plus bz plus c. Okay. Now when we expand these quadratic factors here, we should obtain f of z in this form here as a quartic basically. Okay. So when I expand these out, we should get z to the power of 4 plus 3z cubed minus z squared plus 17z plus 20. Okay. So if I'm using inspection here, the easiest thing to find first would be c because I know to get the 20 here, we take the 4 here and times that by the c. So therefore, 4c must be equal to 20. Okay. So if we solve this here, 4c equals 20. In that case, c is equal to 5. Okay, so we can now rewrite this product here. What we've got then is z squared plus 5z plus 4 times by now. So we've got z squared. We don't know what b is yet, so it's just still bz. But the c, we know that's equal to 5. So we've got plus 5 there. Okay, and again, when we expand this out, 
we should get this here. Okay, so this is equal to z to the power of 4 plus 3z cubed minus z squared plus 17z plus 20. Okay, so now we need the value of b. So how can I get that? Well, I'm going to consider the value of my linear term here. Okay, or this linear term basically is what I'm going to consider. So, how do we get 17z by expanding these brackets here? Well, I've got the 5z times by the 5 here. That would be a linear term. So 5z times by 5 would give me 25z. So we've got 25z. How else can I obtain it? Well, I've got the 4 here. If I times that by bz, that would be also a linear term or z. So I'm going to get 4bz there. So plus 4bz. And there's no other way to obtain a linear term then. So in that case, we've got 25z plus 4bz. And that must be equal to 17z. Okay, so that's equal to 17z. And what I can do now is equate the coefficients. In this case, if these are equal, 25 plus 4b must be equal to 17. Okay. So therefore, 25 plus 4b must be equal to 17. Okay. And if we solve this nice straightforward linear equation here, what I'm going to get then is 4b equals minus 8. So 4b equals minus 8. And therefore, b must be equal to minus 2. Okay. And then we're nearly done. All I want to do now is actually express it in this form here as required. So as a product of quadratic factors. So therefore, f of z is equal. So I've got z squared plus 5z plus 4. So z squared plus 5z plus 4. And then we times this by the second bracket here where we have b and c. Well, b is equal to minus 2 and c is equal to 5. Got z squared again. Um, bz, well, b is minus 2, so minus 2z. And then c is equal to 5. Okay. And there we have it. So that's part A complete. So what about part B then? Well, for part B, it says, hence or otherwise, find all the solutions to f of z equals 0. So, part B then, let me just kind of box this off a little bit here. So I've got a little bit of room here for part B. Okay. So for part B then, hence or otherwise, find all the solutions to f of z equals 0. Well, in that case, we now just set f of z equal to 0 here. So I've got z squared plus 5z plus 4. times by this quadratic factor here. So z squared minus 2z plus 5. And this is equal to 0. Okay. Now, if this product here is equal to 0, what that means then is each factor here is equal to 0. So straight away what I notice, and hopefully you also notice this as well, is this quadratic factor here will have two real solutions. Okay, so in other words, I can actually factorize this. Okay, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that I can factorize it, but I can just look at this straight away and just notice that I can actually factorize this. So what would this factorize as? Well, z squared plus 5z plus 4, we can write that as z plus 1 and z plus 4. Okay, so in that case, then I get two solutions here. That would be when z is equal to minus one. So we get z equals minus one, and we also have z equals minus four. Okay, so that's my first two solutions here. So that's this quadratic factor dealt with. What about this one now? Well, for this one here, the first question is would we get real solutions here? Now, obviously, we're dealing with complex numbers. This topic, this chapter is about complex numbers. Obviously, I wouldn't expect this now to give me two more real solutions here. Okay. Otherwise, there's not really any point to this question as an A-level further maths question, right? So what I'm expecting then is we will get um, complex solutions, basically. So you can check that by finding the discriminant then of z squared minus 2z plus 5. 
and you'll find that the discriminant is less than zero. There's no real solutions, okay? So what I need to do then is solve this here being equal to zero. So we're gonna solve. So we're gonna solve z squared minus two z plus five equals zero, okay? So to do this, all I'm gonna do then is just complete the square. So if we do this, we get z minus one all squared. We're gonna get minus one. We've then got the plus five here. So minus one plus five gives me plus four. And that is equal to zero. We're gonna subtract four off both sides. So we get z minus one all squared. So that's equal to minus four then. And now what I'm gonna do is take the square root of both sides here. So if we do that on the left-hand side, we just simply get z minus one. And on the right-hand side now, we're taking the square root of minus four. So don't forget we get plus or minus here. We need both solutions. So plus or minus, and this will be two i. Okay, so two i there. And then finally, if we just want z here. All I need to do now is add one to both sides. So therefore, z is equal to one plus or minus two i. Okay. And we're pretty much done now because I know the solutions to this quadratic factor here are one plus or minus two i. So what I've got now is all the solutions to f of z equals zero. So solutions, so the solutions to f of z equals zero are given as, so I'm gonna get minus one minus four, we get minus one, minus four, and then we've got one plus two i. So one plus two i and one minus two i. Okay, and there we have it. So like you can see, there is a bit of work involved with these types of questions, but mathematically nothing too challenging, I don't think. Okay, but there we have it. So that gives the solution to the very last question, question two, and that to bring us to the end of this video on solving cubics and quartics.